Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2014 EGU award ceremony. It is our great pleasure to honor our medalists and awardees. Please welcome on stage the EGU president, Günther Blöschel. Good evening. Indeed, welcome to our award ceremony. I'm glad you're here to celebrate with us excellence, excellence in the geosciences. And when we talk about excellence, it's always about people. Of course, we have data, we have models, we have tools, but at the end, excellence hinges around what we do as people and how we connect, how we communicate. EGU, as the premier geosciences union in Europe, has the aim to foster the communication, the exchange of ideas, and as part of that, we are celebrating the awardees today. This year, EGU has a theme, the face of the earth, process and form, to reflect the interactions between the geosciences processes and the patterns we see on the surface of, this, of the earth and in the on the ground, and in the subsurface, in the atmosphere, and in space. And this theme also celebrates the diversity of the processes we see. Like the face of a person, the patterns we see are very intricate and diverse. And this diversity can be uh, typical and representative of the diversity of geosciences themselves. Indeed, it is the diversity of people that really contributes to the synergies when we collaborate. Each, and in the, each individual, they have their strengths, they have their particular talents, and as we work together in groups, this is where progress comes about. So welcome again to our award ceremony. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage the EGU Vice President, Hans Tübo. Welcome. It's a real privilege to, to honor this year's award winners who are among the best scientists in their disciplines. Even though the EDU is the European Geosciences Union, the list of awardees clearly shows that, uh, the, the, that uh, we are giving international prizes here. And uh, in this regard, I find that the EDU is clearly the most internationally um, oriented organization in the geosciences. It's an honor and a privilege uh, to be here among some of the best scholars in the world, and not only in Europe, but in the whole world. The awardee are truly worth celebrating for this profound scientific results, and thank you for joining us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome first the 2013 Outstanding Student Poster Awardees here on stage. Please applaud Annette Müller, Atmospheric Sciences. Ian Chan, Atmospheric Sciences. Vanya Brasica, Atmospheric Sciences. Anna Hedenruth, Biogeosciences. Leo Kirchmeier, Biogeosciences. Benjamin Quesada, Climate, Past, Present and Future. Christian Bachelor, Climate. Joyce Bosman, Climate. Lea Levy, Climate. Johanna Frenslund Levinson, Cryospheric Sciences. Christian Stefan, Earth Magnetics and Rock Physics. Lindsay Speff, Energy, Resources and the Environment. Gabriel Cuello, Geochemistry, Mineralogy, Petrology and Volcanology. 
Bastebur, Geodesy, Verena Lieb, Geodesy, Chase Chu, Geodynamics, Ping Fu, Geomorphology, Froke Holen, Hydrological Sciences, Jamur Derin, Hydrological Sciences, Sophie Gangel, Isotopes and Geosciences. Hyum Haili Chin, Nonlinear Processes and Geosciences. Ifi Franga, Ocean Sciences. Violet Sunz, Ocean Sciences. Jose Luis Mesa Unya, Planetary and Solar System Sciences. Oleg Shebanitz. Planetary and Solar System Sciences. Vladimir Neumann. Planetary and Solar System Sciences. Zachary Gerason. Planetary and Solar System Sciences. Mike Neukirch, Seismology. Philip Kempf, Seismology. Alexandra Andre Remke, Soil System Sciences. Andra Rada Hurian, Soil System Sciences. Claudia Giudi, Soil System Sciences. Stuart Ray, Soil System Sciences. Beorte Krövel Hümberset, Solar Terrestrial Sciences. Ken McDermott, Tectonics and Structural Geology. And Thomas Sears, Tectonics and Structural Geology. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage the 2014 Division Outstanding Young Scientists. Please applaud Nick Dunstone, Climate, Past, Present and Future. Tabea Lissner, Energy, Resources and the Environment. Rölof Riedbrück, Geodesy. Rodri Davis, Geodynamics. Robert Hilton, Geomorphology. Fubao Sun, Hydrological Sciences. Nicolas Ecker, Natural Hazards. Christina Plenaki, Planetary and Solar System Sciences. Markus Steffens, Soul System Sciences. Stacia Jordan, Tectonics and Structural Geology. And it's now my pleasure to call on stage the 2014 Division Medalists. Please applaud Urs Baltensberger, Wilhelm Bjergnes Medal. Klaus Butterbach Baal, Vladimir Ivanovic Venatsky Medal. Maureen Ramo, Milutin Milankovic Medal. Sharon Flitz, Hans Oeschger Medal. Dorte Dahl Jensen, Louis Agassi Medal. Reinhard Dietrich, Wenning Meines Medal. 
Shun Ichiro Karatu, Augustus Love Medal. Peter van de Beek, Ralf Alga Bagnold Medal. Chris Hawksworth, Robert Wilhelm Bunsen Medal. Hoshin Gupta, John Dalton Medal. Upmanu Lal, Henri Dassi Medal. Ian Main, Louis Neil Medal. Rob van der Fau, Petrus Peregrinus Medal. Herman Fritz, Plinius Medal. Olivier Talagrand, Louis Fry Richardson Medal. Stephen Griffiths, Fridjof Nansen Medal. Francois Forger, David Bates Medal. Gregory Barosa, Beno Gutenberg Medal. Isabella Premoli Silva, Jean Baptiste Lamarck Medal. Johann Six, Philippe de Chiffon Medal. Karl Schindler, Hannes Alfen Medal. Rumi Nakamura, Julius Bartels Medal. Claudio Facena, Stefan Müller Medal. Kostas Sinolakis, Sergei Solovyov Medal. For the picture we have to look together. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present the Union Awards and Medals. First, I'm calling the 2014 Union Service Awardee Thomas Hofmann on stage, together with the citationist Werner Piller.
Werner Piller is kindly delivering the citation for Thomas Hofmann. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to present Thomas Hofmann. He earned a degree in paleontology. However, he is currently the head of the library at the Geological Survey in Vienna. Sorry. However, his real passion is, is public outreach activities. And this brought him close to each you, particularly to the annual assembly here in Vienna from the very beginning. And uh, Thomas really contributing, contributed in promoting each you in an exceptional way with a high impact on various levels of public outreach and sponsorship. And I would say as a climax, since 2013, all EGU publications are shared in the library catalog of the Geological Survey of Austria, providing a special service for the entire scientific community. In addition, he is co-authoring the book, which has been presented this year to all the participants at the EGU. And all in all, I cannot think of anybody without any official EGU function who has contributed so much to promoting the union as Thomas has. And I really think that Thomas Hoffman is a worthy recipient of the 2014 Union Service Award. Thomas Hoffman is presented the EGU 2014 Union Service Award. Dear President, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you. Uh, someone might ask, uh, what's the position here? Well, I would call myself a kind of ambassador, a connecting link between Austria, the Austrian geoscientific community, and the EGU. One year always at EGU, the other year in Austria. And my aim is to listen and to make of one and one, three, four, or even more. I started in 2007 when Gerald Kansen was president of EGU, and hopefully I will never stop to do it like this. Thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now awarding the 2014 Arne Richter Awards for Outstanding Young Scientist. This award is dedicated to recognize Arne Richter's entire life of tireless dedication to geoscience in Europe. Please welcome on stage Sebastian Watt and citationist David Peil, Peter Bale and citationist Api Slaus. Noé Lugas and citationist Volker Botma and Matthias Hus and citationist Georg Kasa. David Peil is kindly delivering the citation for Sebastian Watt. It's my very great pleasure to introduce um, Dr. Sebastian Watt as a recipient of an Arne Richter Outstanding Young Scientist Award. In a very short time, <clears throat> Seb has established a formidable reputation for his many and notable contributions. 
to studies of the dispersal and deposition of tephra, particularly following the, the eruption of Volcan Chaiten in Chile in 2008, to the reconstruction of regional eruption histories on an arc segment scale, again in southern Chile. Uh, his work on advancing the understanding of volcanic landslides, both above and below the sea, and to the new field of biomonitoring of volcanic activity. What marks Seb out is the breadth of his work and the level of his scholarship, hallmarks that will ensure that his contributions are lasting. Seb began his career at the University of Cambridge, where he completed an undergraduate dissertation on the environmental geochemistry of Mount Etna. I was very fortunate to be his advisor for that project, and uh, I struggled to think how he could possibly come and do a PhD with me, because Seb was quite clearly going to move universities. I moved to Oxford, and uh, Seb moved to Oxford for graduate study, and developed an ambitious research program in, vol in investigating volcanism in southern Chile. During the course of this work, Seb worked on the link between large earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, documented for the first time the effects of a volcanic landslide in 1965, which triggered a devastating tsunami, and established a new time framework for post-glacial volcanism across a wide region of Chile, giving for the first time insights into what happens to a volcanic arc when you remove the ice at the end of a glaciation. Since completing his uh, PhD, Seb has extend extended his portfolio considerably, working on submarine landslides, volcanic flank collapses. He won a competitive UK NERC research fellowship while at Southampton, and he's now a lecturer at the University of Birmingham. Seb, it has been a tremendous privilege and a pleasure to work with you in the past, and I shall watch with great interest as your career flourishes. Congratulations. Sebastian Watt is presented the EGU 2014 Anrichter Outstanding Young Scientist Award. I would just like to thank David for those uh, very generous words. Um, I'll keep this brief, but I've been very fortunate to work on a, a diverse range of projects um, ever since I started working with uh, David Pyle and Tamsin Maver at Cambridge. Um, and one of the things they instilled in me was to always pursue ideas, even if they were in areas outside um, my immediate expertise. Um, that we could explore these new avenues and follow this, my scientific curiosity. And I've certainly benefited from their openness to, um, to reaching beyond um, sort of the immediate scope of the work that I was doing. Um, in a similar way, moving to Southampton, I'd also like to particularly thank uh, Peter Talling, who as a sedimentologist perhaps um, would have more naturally employed a marine geologist um, for the postdoctoral position that I worked with him on, but was open to the idea of a volcanologist coming in and exploring new ideas together. Um, I can't go on to thank all the other colleagues that I've um, been privileged enough to work with over the past few years by name, um, but I've benefited from working with all of them. And finally, I would like to thank EGU for presenting me with this award, which is a great privilege to receive. Thank you. Apri Slaus is kindly delivering the citation for Peter Bale. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Bale. Peter is a uh, micropaleontologist. Peter is a stratigrapher, paleoecologist, an organic geochemist, a paleoceanographer, a sedimentologist, and a paleoclimatologist. And he's graduated his PhD in 2011. It's, rem it's been remarkable to see, as uh, one of his advisors, uh, how he developed his multidisciplinary skills over the past years to, answers, uh, to answer his own very creative scientific questions. Moreover, uh, his ability to successfully integrate interdisciplinary Earth system science is truly unique. Particularly his work on uh, Antarctic climates and the application of biogeographic tracers, notably dinoflagellates in their, in their cysts, for paleocurrent reconstructions, particularly of the Southern Ocean, is of unprecedented quality. Most importantly, however, Peter is just a very nice guy, right? 
not only as a colleague, but also as a friend. So with great pleasure, I congratulate Peter for, for receiving the Arne Richter Award for the Outstanding Young Scientists for fundamental contributions to the understanding of Paleocene using climate change and paleoceanography. Peter Bale is presented the EGU Arne Richter Outstanding Young Scientist Award. Thanks, Appy. Um, I think my first geology book had a quote that uh, was from Alfred Wegener that said, um, it's through the combination of all the earth sciences that we can hope to determine truth here. And I think uh, this award for me is, is a personal award, but it's much more so a award for multidisciplinary research. And I, I'm fully uh, glad with that, of course. Uh, I'd like to obviously uh, thank the good nursery I had at uh, Utrecht University, uh, the perfect uh, ground for me to develop my scientific career. And I'm still doing that there as well. Uh, I will also a big uh, thanks to uh, in the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program to provide the sedimentary uh, archives that I work with uh, in the first place. And then also a big start for my career was the Urbino Summer School in Paleoclimatology, where I got to meet as a very young uh, PhD student um, the cream of the crop in my field and could ask them questions and start to think about uh, things that I wanted to work with. Uh, obviously, uh, Every, every person starts with, uh, with his parents, so I'd like to thank my parents a lot for supporting me always uh, during my uh, career so far, and I'm sure they will do that in the future. And obviously, uh, Emmy and Willem and Jort for um, give, make, making my spare time more than just spare time. So thank you very much. Volker Botmer is kindly delivering the citation for Noé Lugas. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce that, uh, you to Dr. Noé Lugas, who has received his um, PhD 2006 at the University of Michigan and who is now assistant professor at the University of New Hampshire in the US. So I know Dr. Lugas and his work since launch of the STEREO mission and uh, he has made outstanding contributions to space physics and to the understanding of solar storms and uh, coronal mass ejections and the sun earth connections. And for people like uh, us or me being involved in the mission um, development in, in, in the instrument design and the mission operations, it's very encouraging to have scientists uh, uh, enabling us to understand the observations. So what we designed and what we observe, we need uh, outstanding young people um, to help us exploring further the sun earth system and I think the work of uh, Dr. Lucas will be outstanding also for our future steps. So congratulations. Noé Lugas is presented the EGU 2014 Arne Richter Outstanding Young Scientist Award. Uh, thank you, Volker, for this uh, citation, and thank you to the EGU for awarding me this uh, Annie Richter Prize. Uh, it's a great honor indeed to uh, receive this Young Scientist Prize, and even more, I think that only me out of these uh, four other, three other people can say that uh, a prize named after a solar um, space plasma physicist like Arne Richter, because uh, space plasma is indeed part of geosciences. And uh, it's really nice to have a prize named after one of our own, a space plasma physicist. Uh, there's a great many people I should thank, many of my collaborators. Uh, I'm not going to thank them by name all. Uh, I'll just thank all my collaborators, past, present, and future, so that I'm done for the rest of my life. Um, more, more precisely, there's a few people I should name. Uh, first is actually my nominator, which couldn't come today. It's Charlie Farrugia from the of New Hampshire also, as well as my uh, past supervisor, because research is not individual endeavor is really something that 
need a group of people, especially uh, when you work on missions or large numerical codes like I do. So people like Ilya Rousseff, uh, Chip Manchester, and Tamash Gombozi uh, have really helped me become what I am. And uh, I'm very happy to uh, be awarded this prize. Thank you. Georg Kaser is kindly delivering the citation for Matthias Huss. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce Matthias Huss, a young and outstanding glaciologist who completed his PhD at the ETH in Zurich in 2009 and currently has a joint appointment there at the University of Fribourg. Uh, Matthias has made substantial and innovative contributions to a broad range of topics in glaciology spanning local, regional, uh, and global scales. Close to, to 50 papers since his first publication in 2007 document Matthias' vivid and creative uh, productivity. Most importantly, Matthias has shown the capacity to question and... Sorry, I have lost my voice this morning. Uh, and deviate from conventional wisdom and think outside the box, so to say, to critically review existing methods and to suggest intriguing new ways of looking at glaciological problems. His ideas can be provocative and controversial, but always evolve from thoughtful considerations. In summary, Matthias has demonstrated excellency, independency, and a level of scientific maturity that is clearly exceptional and make him a highly deserving recipient of the EGU Arne Richter Award for Outstanding Young Scientists. Congratulations, Matthias, also on behalf of the uh, cryospheric community. Matthias Huss is presented the EGU 2014 Anrichter Outstanding Young Scientist Award. Thank you very much, Georg. So for me, as one who has started to study the small glaciers in the Alps in our backyard. It is really a great honor to receive such a, a distinction from the whole EGU, but as well from the cryospheric community. As a young scientist, this is both a fantastic chance, but also a motivation to continue along the tracks I have followed the last years. So I would like to thank all the many people who have supported and accompanied me throughout the last years. In, in particular, I would like to thank Regina Hock for her guidance and her continuous scientific support. So thank you again also to the EU for this award. It really means something to me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now presenting the 2014 EGU Union Medals. Please welcome on stage Eric Wood with citationist Dennis Lettenmeyer, <laughs> Kevin Berg and citationist Louis Eschwell, Stamatios Grimiges and citationist Ioannis Daglis, and Pradeep Mujumda and citationist Walter Bautert.
Dennis Lettenmeier is kindly delivering the citation for Eric Wood. Thank you, and I am very pleased to have the opportunity to uh, be here on this occasion. The um, nominating letter that I wrote for uh, Eric's medal is about the same length as the citation. Uh, it's quite short. It notes three areas, uh, remote sensing, contributions to macro scale, um, modeling, and scaling theory. But these attempts to sort of categorize a career into groups, well, well they're the way one tries to write letters, uh, nominating letters, they miss, they miss an awful lot. And I could not begin to capture the impact that Eric's work has had on the hydrologic community. Uh, I've known and worked with Eric for something like 35 years. Uh, I had the opportunity some five or so years ago uh, to do the introduction when he received the Dalton Medal. At that time, I noted that the collaboration went back to an AGU committee in the 70s, uh, which produced one paper in uh, EOS and went out of business. At that time, the paper had been cited one time. I checked this afternoon. It's still been cited one time. Uh, however, the collaboration went on to be extremely productive, uh, certainly, uh, certainly for me. Um, if you go back to the years when Eric and, and I were sort of getting our start, it was mostly AGU because EGU hadn't uh, really even been dreamt of yet at that point. Uh, and the general mode of operation was that if I wrote a paper on a given topic and then you came along and wrote a, top, a paper on a similar topic, yours must be wrong, okay? And as a friend of mine uh, once said, basically just too much testosterone. And uh, in fact, it was also an all-male operation. I think uh, at this point, our junior colleagues have a much uh, different set of circumstances in uh, rising through their career. But the one thing that I found from Eric that made a huge difference to my career was Eric didn't have that attitude. If he saw a paper, uh, or listen to a presentation on some area, even if it was related to work he was doing, often he would say, you know, I wonder if you took that and combined it with this other thing, could you then do something else? In other words, in, in, a, in a certain way, uh, he was very opportunistic in, in a collegial fashion. And I think that, that's an extremely important lesson. Uh, just one other thing, and Gunter told me I had exactly two minutes or he would uh, be up here with a hook. Uh, I just want to point out that, that Eric has done tremendous service to the hydrologic community and to the earth sciences community more broadly. Uh, I can't begin to name the number of people whose nominations for awards, various other positions, Eric has led or has motivated to happen. And in many cases, these have happened with these people not even being aware that they were the beneficiaries. He's worked tirelessly on behalf of the community. So, uh, Eric, congratulations. I'm very pleased uh, that you're receiving this medal. Eric Wood is presented the EGU 2014 Alfred Wegener Medal and Honorary Membership. Mr. President, uh, first I'd like to thank EGU for selecting me for the Wegener Medal. It's a fantastic honor that I truly uh, appreciate. And Dennis, thank you for your uh, kind words. And I'd like to thank you and my colleagues who, uh, nominate, who supported my nomination, Pavel Kabat, Hans Dolman, Keith Bevan, Siva Savapalin, and Jan Kerr. And uh, I am uh, very appreciative that you feel that my research and its, and its impact has met the level of this uh, wonderful honor. So this medal belongs to many people. Foremost, my 32 PhD students. I've had over 20 research staff. I've had over 
25 uh, visiting students, and uh, they've all passed through my group at Princeton, and each of them deserves a part of this honor. I have the greatest respect and gratitude for their creativity, hard work, and dedication. The time I spend talking to them about their research results is the most enjoyable time that I spend in, in my week. Talking to the administrators, well, that's a different thing. So who else this medal belongs to? It belongs to my collaborators. Rarely do we work in isolation, and sharing ideas and having collaborators has been extremely satisfying. I'm afraid if I started to name my collaborators, I'd forget critical names, but I really would like to uh, mention a few of them whose timely influence and long-time collaborations have made significant differences to my career. First, I must, I must mention Keith Bevan, who in the early 80s, uh, when I was on sabbatic leave at the Institute of Hydrology, he got me interested in hydrological processes and modeling them. Secondly, I must mention Robert Gurney, now at Reading University, but then at NASA, who introduced me to remote sensing in the mid-1980s. He asked me at that time to be on NASA's Earth Observing System Science uh, Steering Committee as they were starting to formulate the Earth Observing System. That committee was under Dixon Butler. And land surface modeling and remote sensing have been central elements to my research for the last 25 years. Thirdly, I must recognize my friendship and very long collaboration with Dennis Lettenmar, who just gave this citation. Sometime in the late 1980s, we actually laid out a strategy to develop a land surface model, that's our uh, infamous uh, VIC model, that started sm modeling at small regions, uh, I think the Kansas Isleskip domain where we could validate hydrology and energy fluxes. It was the first model that actually did that coupled model. Hydrologists before that were just doing water budgets. And then larger regions, the Boreas experiment in northern Canada, and then large basins, the Red Arkansas Basin as part of a PILPS 2C experiment. And today we do global simulations at high resolution, 60 to 100 years, three hour ensembles. It's been a remarkable transformation. And that strategy basically was formulated 20 years ago and has held its way, which I find also quite remarkable. I must thank NASA and NOAA, who over the years has supported my research, and the program managers, uh, particularly Jared Enton, who saw value in my research, and the people in the Climate Program Office at NOAA. We can't execute our ideas with, unless we can uh, have support, and I very much appreciate that. Finally, I want to mention two key colleagues who are currently with me at Princeton, Justin Sheffield and Ming Pan. They, I have the greatest respect and thanks for their research and the work that they do with me. I've been lucky. I enjoy the creativity of my research. I've had great students, great research staff. I have great colleagues. Gunther, again, many thanks to the EGU for this wonderful medal. Louis Ashwell is kindly delivering the citation for Kevin Burke. Today, EGU is presenting one of its most prestigious awards, the Arthur Holmes Medal to Kevin Burke, who was described in more than one of the uh, support letters that I received as the broadest and most generally knowledgeable geologist alive today. For six decades, Kevin has been illuminating our understanding of the Earth by continuing to test and refine the hypothesis that plate tectonics has been the operative heat loss mechanism on the Earth for as far back in the past as the geological record allows us to make observations and measurements. In uh, 1974, it was Kevin who coined the term Wilson cycle, which we all know very well. After his degrees at the University College London, his career employment started in Ghana and then took him to several other former British colonies, Nigeria, Jamaica, Canada, and the United States. His 200 papers 
include seminal works on rifts, allocogens, foreland basins, collisional belts, tectonic escape structures, greenstone belts, and most recently, the generation of plumes from the edges of the lowermost mantle structures he affectionately described yesterday as Jason and Tuzo. Um, Kevin and Arthur Holmes are similar in background and accomplishments. Both men were born and educated in England, developed a passion for and made outstanding contributions to African geology and achieved worldwide not notoriety for global scale geological processes. Please join me in glorifying Kevin Charles Anthony Burke as a most worthy recipient of the Arthur Holmes Medal. Kevin Burke is presented the 2014 Arthur Holmes Medal and EGU Honorary Membership. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members of the AGU, for this award, which uh, totally unexpected by me and a fantastic surprise. And um, I think that, as Hans Thibault has suggested earlier, it's the breadth of the generosity in the people to whom the EGU gives its award compared with uh, countries like the United States, my home, and perhaps other countries, and I think I may be profiting from that because I've looked at the records of former people who have, and people I know who have had this award, and they're all scientists who uh, make observations, experiments, models, and things like that um, with great success. And over the last half of my life, 42 years since I came to live in the United States, my Health has deteriorated, not rapidly, but to the extent that I've not been able to do the kind of field work that I was trained to do. And I just tell people what it is they've found out. And I have found it somewhat distressing that they're not always that pleased when I tell them what it is they've found out. So it takes, and I think this is very important in science, it takes the recognition of people whose activities are not in the central path, but uh, uh, in, in other ways active to be recognized as being in the big tent of science, because science is amazingly diverse and can accommodate all, all kinds of people. <coughs> one, one of the things I am very keen to mention is that like everybody else who's spoken, I'm extremely appreciative of involvement with the people with whom I've worked. Most recently, people like Lou Ashwell and Tron Torsvik, and before that, in 10 happy years at the State University of New York with Jalal Schenger, who is here, and Bill Kidd and John Dewey. We were able to achieve a, an amazing amount, in my interest, of working out and showing how plate tectonics has operated during the history of the Earth back four billion years. And uh, before that, I had the privilege of working with Tuzo Wilson in Canada for two years, and that was an amazing experience because he was fantastically broad. He took 
the effort of sitting on all kinds of committees. And the reason was that he would go for Ixu to some country, and then he'd have field trips in that country. And I've attempted to emulate that to some extent. So that the only time Tuzo met uh, Jalal Schenger, and Schenger said he was born in Bursa, Oh, Tuzo said, oh, on that alluvial fan down from the Hercinian Massif. Well, it's not a Hercinian Massif, but at least he had been there and knew something about it. And that, that's, for a geologist, is amazingly important. So before Tuzo Wilson, I worked uh, in, in Jamaica with Tom Goro, at that time, the, Tom Goro Sr., the, at that time the leading reef ecologist, and I learned an amazing amount about carbonate geology. And I learned that in any environment, if organisms can exist, they will dominate. And I think uh, that was a very useful lesson to learn. And before that, I worked with um, uh, Sid Holling Hollingworth, who was my initial mentor, who recognized that geology was a field in which I might profit. And uh, altogether, I've been amazingly fortunate. And I thank members of the earth science community, all of the members of the earth science community, atmospheres, oceans, everyone, who have done so much for me and done so much in improving our understanding of the planet, which is amazingly different from when I was a young man and much better. And science is progressing so fast now that although I think it is rather a miserable time on the earth in some ways, science is achieving so much and we can be very, very proud of that. So thank you very much to the AGU and thank you, Mr. President, for this award. Ioannis Daglis is kindly delivering the citation for Stamatios Krimigis. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure and an honor for me to introduce uh, Dr. Krimigis. Stamatios Krimigis, or Tom Krimigis for the linguistically challenged, was born on one of the most beautiful islands of the Mediterranean, Chios, which is a jewel of the Eastern Aegean Sea. In the town where he was born, there is a tradition that would in some mysterious ways define his future endeavors. On Easter Eve night, small homemade rockets are being launched by opponent groups to each other's parish church in a fierce rocket competition. Stamatios was, enthusiast was an enthusiastic participant himself in his youth. No wonder that he became a space physicist, building and placing instruments on rockets that uh, reached and explored every planet of the solar system. Right after finishing high school in Chios, Stamatios set off to study physics in the US, and later he worked on his PhD under the supervision of James Van Allen. Dr. Krimigis, now a member of the Academy of Athens and chair of the space office at the Academy, was head of the space department of the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory from 1991 to 2004. His research, his research career is marked by similar contributions in solar, interplanetary, magnetospheric, and planetary physics. Under his leadership, experiments have been designed, constructed, tested, and launched onboard spacecraft to analyze the plasma environment of the Earth, the other planets, and the heliosphere. He has built instruments and analyzed data from the magnetospheres of all eight planets in the solar system. He even has an instrument on the way to Pluto, now considered a nanoplanet. Among Dr. Krimigis' outstanding scientific contributions, we can cite his pioneering work on solar energetic particle events, the characterization of the hot plasma environments of the giant planets with the Voyagers, 
the characterization of energetic ions in the outer heliosphere, the in-depth analysis of the neutral plasma interactions in the Cronian magnetosphere and the energetic neutral atom imager that made this analysis possible, the crossing of the heliospheric termination shock, and most recently, the exit of Voyager 1 from the heliosphere into the galaxy, the first human-made obje human object to do so. Dr. Krimidzis also excelled in leading the design and implementation of new paradigms in space science missions that minimized cost and schedule while maximizing the science return. These innovative missions include NEAR, the first NASA discovery mission that orbited the asteroid Eros and landed on it after a year in orbit, even though it was not designed to do so. The joint US-German-UK Active Magnetospheric Particle Tracer Explorers program that performed the first active experiments in the magnetosphere. The ACE mission at L1, providing real-time space weather data since 1997. The MESSENGER spacecraft, orbiting Mercury since 2011. And the New Horizons mission, en route to a Pluto flyby in 2015. These missions involve large numbers of engineers and scientists who have benefited from the harvest of first-class science data, leading to many discoveries so far and probably many more in future. In the area of science policy, he chaired the, he chaired the Committee on Solar and Space Physics of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences and conducted the first decadal survey in this discipline area, known as the Crimigius Report in 1985. Needless to say, he has been a member or chair of many boards and advisory committees pertaining to science policy issues. As a final comment, Dr. Krimidzic's publish publication record is outstanding. He has published some 500 papers with more than 10,000 citations and has an age index of 54 in the ISI Web of Science. My congratulations to Dr. Krimidzic. Mr. Matthias Krimiges is presented the 2014 Jean-Dominique Cassini Medal and Honorary Membership. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Vice President, and members of the EGU Council, colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen, I am indeed very honored to have been selected by the EGU for this uh, unique distinction. I'm exceptionally grateful to the nominator, Professor Douglas, and those who wrote letters on my behalf, whose name I don't know, but I thank them. Uh, the Union's Selection Committee for their confidence and uh, the EGU Council for concurring with their recommendation. Uh, so, uh, how can I rebut all the deeds that have been ascribed to me by the nominator? Um, my principal defense is that I had a lot of help from those I worked with all these years colleagues, uh, postdocs, uh, students, scientists, and engineers, and managers alike. They're the ones who made it possible for me to stand in front of you today to accept this honor, and I dedicate the Cassini Medal to them. The most valuable piece of advice that I have ever received uh, has been from one of my a great friend who was, has been an excellent program manager. He said, and I quote, the good Lord gave us two ears and one mouth to be used in proportion, end of quote. So I have learned most of what I know by listening to others, uh, even those who work at NASA and ESA headquarters who make our science possible, the so-called bureaucrats that we often love to hate. 
sometimes. Uh, finally, I've had the extraordinarily good fortune of being invited by Professor James A. Van Allen, as uh, the nominator said, of the Van Allen Belts fame, to be his student. And he became my mentor and uh, lifelong friend. But more about him tomorrow, uh, uh, in tomorrow's lecture at 1215, at least for those of you who um, uh, choose to forego your lunch and lose some weight. Uh, so I will wear the Cassini medal with pride and uh, being one of the principal investigators of the cassini Hoyas mission currently in orbit around Saturn makes it all the more meaningful. Thank you very, very much for the honor. Walter Bautat is kindly delivering the citation for Pradip Mujumda. Thank you. Hydrology, as very many disciplines here at EGU, is an applied science. Saying that water is life is perhaps a cliche the size of the Amazon basin, but it is true that as hydrologists we are working, we have the privilege of working on a topic that directly affects the livelihoods of billions of people. Uh, and it is for the ability of marrying excellent scholarship with a direct impact on people's lives that I uh, nominated Prajeep Mudumda for the um, uh, von Humboldt Medal. And over the last decades, Professor Majumda has been shaping hydrological science and water resources management in India and the rest of South Asia. Uh, you all know that India struggles with some of the, the world's highest population growth, unprecedented levels and scales of land use change uh, in um, extractions, sorry, and sustainable depletion of groundwater resources, um, and climate change, uh, contamination, etc. And at the same time, hydrological sciences struggles to provide answers because of the sheer complexity, data scarcity, and deep uncertainties of uh, the, um, uh, analyzing the hydrological cycle. And it's under these conditions that Professor Majumda has pioneered new conceptual approaches to deal with those uncertainties, uh, such as fuzzy logic, possibility theory, imprecise probability, and Bayesian interference or inference. Um, and uh, applying them to areas as diverse as floodplain uh, management, uh, wastewater allocation, reservoir control, um, contribution and attribution of hydrological change, climate change adaptation, etc. And these contributions are, of course, reflected in a, pro a prolific scientific career, which started with an, um, a degree in water resources engineer, uh, engineering from IIT Karakpur then a PhD at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, a lectureship at IIT Bombay, and later then back to Bangalore, where he's been a full professor since 2004. But in a country such as India, where over a billion people experience a perfect storm of dwindling water resources, there's also a tremendous opportunity for applying rigorous scientific research to create a positive impact on society. And this is, I think, where Pradeep particularly excels. Apart from his scientific career, he has acted as chairman, steering committee member, advising committee member, etc., on numerous uh, national and state level institutions in, in India and abroad. Just to name a few, the Indian National Water Mission, the Indian National Disaster Management Authority, the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Indian Water Technology Initiative, UNESCO's International Floods Initiative, and many others. And especially for scientists, governmental bureaucracies tend to move in a frustratingly slow and unpredictable pace, uh, especially in a country of the size and the complexity of India. So for a scientist to engage in policy support requires an outstanding commitment, patience, and skill to understand the thinking of policymakers. And it is really through translating novel hydrological thinking into such a governance with such relentless energy and patience that I am delighted that uh, Pradeep receives the von Humboldt Medal today. Thank you very much. Pradeep Mujumda is presented the 2014 Alexander von Humboldt Medal.
Thank you very much, uh, Otter. It's a great honor and privilege for me to receive the Alexander Hornabout Medal of the EGU for the year 2014. I thank Professor Gunther Bloshi, President EGU, Professor Hans Jubo, Vice President EGU, Dr. Philip Korshiel, Executive Secretary EGU, Professor Alberto Montanari, Chairman, Award Committee, and members of the committee for awarding this prestigious medal to me. I greatly value this recognition and accept it with all humility. I thank Otter Botter, uh, Imperial College London, for nominating me for this medal. Professor Vinod Gaur, India. Professor Dragan Savage, UK. Banu Nupane, UNESCO. And Professor C.S. Manohar, my colleague at Indian Institute of Science, for supporting the letters, for supporting the nomination. Otter and I are now working together in a large and formidable consortium on a collaborative project under the Changing Water Cycles uh, program of the NERC UK and the Ministry of Earth Sciences India. Uh, it has been a highly rewarding experience for our group in India to work with Otter and his colleagues on this large project. Starting with this project, we aim to provide an understanding of the hydrologic feedbacks to the climate system apart from an assessment of change in water fluxes due to land use change in the Ganga River Basin, and develop innovative water management options for the water stress region. I convey my special thanks to Dr. Anna Meech, Imperial College London, for skillfully steering the activities in our collaboration. Thanks to her leadership, we are now taking this wonderful teamwork forward through the IHS Panthera Working Group on Energy and Food Impacts on Water. We are all excited to work together in, this, in the coming years on this extremely timely issue, especially in the context of rapidly developing countries like India. My special thanks to my UK colleagues who are here this evening, Andy Turner, Chris Jackson, and the young PhD students at Imperial, John, Gina, Simon, and Jimmy. My research group has immensely benefited from collaborations with Professor Uppannulal, Columbia University, USA. I personally owe a great deal to him for my professional growth. I also thank my other collaborators, Professor Ashish Sharma of University of New South Wales, Australia, and Professor Yango Kim of Seoul National University, South Korea, who are both here in this evening. My research students, current and past, have brought an intense meaning to my life and I owe this recognition to all of them. I would like to make a special mention of my past PhD student, Dr. Subhimal Ghosh, who has come all the way from India to be a part of this ceremony. Today, many developing countries are staring at an impending water crisis. The symptoms are numerous. Inaccessibility of safe drinking water to sizable sections of population, indiscriminate and unsustainable exploitation of groundwater, large stretches of rivers polluted beyond acceptable levels, contaminated groundwater, transport of water to cities over large distances with huge pumping involving enormous energy, unplanned urban growth encroaching upon natural water bodies and drainage pathways resulting in frequent and intense flooding in cities, and severe water shortages. Climate change will most likely be an additional stress. These issues call for a committed action from the scientific community, apart from obvious policy interventions. In this background, the Alexander von Humboldt Medal, by recognizing the scientific work carried out in developing countries, comes as a compelling motivator for high-quality contributions from the developing countries. Thank you all very much for this honor. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending the 2014 
award ceremony of the EGU, the president, Günther Blöschel, is now kindly closing this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been honoring outstanding scientists tonight. Their citations we've heard during the week for the division medals and the citations we've heard tonight for the union medals are a real testimony that we're doing outstanding research in the geosciences. The depth of the research and the breadth of the research is really amazing. Equally important to the excellence of the research is that research is revolving around people and our AODs that received their recognitions at all stages of their careers are indeed role models. Role models for our community demonstrating that we can indeed perform outstanding research and who demonstrate how this outstanding research can be achieved. So congratulations again to all the AODs. I would like to thank you for coming and I would like to invite you to a reception in foyer B, which we will have right after this meeting. Thank you very much.